Yep. Air. Touch it. Air. We can hear it. I can see it. Mm. Yep. So now I know that works. Get rid of the water. Mm. So we've got air, water, wheels work. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Light. 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 So in suction, so we can hear it now. Change is tune. So if you get your suction, mm. you can do this. So you don't have to put it in water. If we blow water, we know that it's blowing something and then we can see air. So we don't have to stick it in water, but we always do this because it makes us feel better. What we don't want to do is do this. Why do we not want to do this? Lens? No. You see the little silver piece? That actually directs the air and the water over the lens. And what we do is we compress that on the end. So if we bash this, that will actually flatten that and that will then restrict the air and the water to come out, okay? So that's what we're avoiding. <clears throat> Damaging the tip, yes, we've got to be careful of, but these old scopes are not. Anything else we do to the scope? Before I start, I'll always put my hand down the scope. In particular, a gastroscope, why? In particular, a gastroscope. You've worked with me before, that's why I'm picking on you. And you've seen me, I pick the scope up and I go like this every time. Why? No. There you go. Somebody could, if somebody's got an indentation on this, they haven't got teeth in their bottom, what it is, it's been caught in the door. Or it's been trapped on something. And then that can cause damage to the, the forceps or any accessories going down. That's what you've got to be. So any compression, biting, etc. So you just give it a quick, and that then tells you. So we've got the scope. Scopes themselves, how clever is a scope? How clever? What's the IQ of a scope? IQ. IQ. What's your IQ? <laughs> What's your IQ? Maybe 85. 85. Oh, okay, so he can barely, he's got bare life existence here. Eight, 85. No, your IQ is minimum 110, 120. Minimum. Okay. What's the IQ of a scope? It goes along with how we deal with it. Whatever we tell the scope to do, it will. So the IQ of a scope is what our IQ is. Do you see what I'm, So the scope is stupid. The scope doesn't know what to do. The scope is an extension of your arm. So when you try to think of it, you've got to keep the scope as straight as possible. Now, if I speak too quick, tell me stop, and I will repeat. No problem at all. Things like this help. How does doing this to a piece of tubing help? You can be sat at home, watching the television, and then you can have a look and then you can see what rotation does to the scope. You can be sat at home, scope is now straight, and then you can see what it does to the scope. You can have a bend in your scope and you can look and see what it does to the scope. So what that's telling you is, is that the closer the two marks are together, the less effect it has here. The further the two marks, are apart, the more this has an effect. Yeah. So I turn this here, nothing. I then take them straight. So what does that tell you? Both of our hands should be far apart. But remember what I said, it's an extension of your arm, so you keep your arm as straight as possible. So loops causes to lose this ability. So what's the importance, because what's the importance of the type of loop we've got? Is it important, I know I've got an alpha loop, gamma loop, n loop, z loop, p loop, they don't exist, but what, is it important? Is it important to know the type of loop? Yeah? yeah. Definitively? Yes? You sure? 100%? Call a friend? You're yes. Okay. Yes or no? Type of loop, no. no. Type of loop, no. We should know if we are having a loop because... We are you know, but you need know. to know what type of loop it is. 
alpha, gamma, n loop. We, we, we don't need really to uh, know about the loop because it is a blind until unless we have the floor scope or uh, imaging. Imagine. Yeah. So you should, you should it, it might help us to reduce the loop. Okay, so you're saying yes. But, uh, no, because I you, never you get no. to know the exact loop which I have. But if you knew what type of loop it was, would that help you? Uh, to reduce, yes. Because so you're saying yes. So it's yes. <laughs> yes. Yes or no? Yes. 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 And that, yes or no? Yes. yes. No. 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 Why no? <laughs> I don't think it's uh, uh, needed to know the type of the loop. Why? Because the principles of uh, reduction of the loop remains the same. Okay, you come and stand there and teach. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know the answer. Yes, and I've already told him, come here and teach. <laughs> so, the answer to the question is, is no. No. Sorry. Okay. Right. So, we'll deal with the loop in a moment. If we have the scope, now, you're the guinea pig. You have to give us some room. Put your feet on this side. Put your... no, this yep. Side. Now, you're going to have to trust me. Close your eyes. This hand. <laughs> this hand. Hold. Right. Okay. <laughs> Keep them closed. Otherwise, I'll put a blanket over your head. Close your hand. Hold that. Now. Reduce this loop slowly. Everything you do, I want you to do slowly. Uh, I, I have to reduce you the loop? Keep your eyes closed. Okay. So, reduce the loop. Reduce the loop? Yeah, so that was very quick, wasn't it? <laughs> wow! Right, now, I'm going to tell you what to do. I would just... Right. So, now apply a clockwise torque slowly. Uh, yes? Clockwise. clockwise. How does that feel? Okay, slowly apply an anti-clockwise. How does that feel? Soft, convenient. Right. So your eyes are definitely shut, yes? Yeah. Definitely shut. Great. Now, keep your eyes closed. So now you know which way is easier to actually rotate the scope. Yeah. I want you to slowly rotate the scope. Hold the hand here. Mm -hmm. And instead of pulling the hand back, I want you to slowly walk backwards. Right, as you reduce, as you reduce, as you reduce. Are you to putting the torque on to reduce the scope? Are you putting the correct torque on to reduce the loop? No, I did not torque. So, just, uh, so you're just going to pull that back, are you? No, I wouldn't. The, slowly apply it and keep going backwards. Walk backwards, walk backwards, walk backwards, walk backwards. Is your hand still in the same place? No, it's not. Walk backwards, walk backwards, walk backwards. What, you're safe, keep walking. Now open your eyes. I know you've opened your eyes. Look at the distance you've walked back. Yeah. Now step up. So there's your loop. Now undo the loop again without moving. Put your feet up to the pad. Now reduce the loop like you would do normally. I would have to pull it back because... Right. So hand. what does that tell you? We have to make the distance so... You haven't pulled out enough. Yeah. No, you're fine. What? What does that tell you? So you've not come back far enough. So a lot of the time when we reduce a loop, we don't come back far enough. So if you've seen the distance that she walked, there is no way a hand is where she ended up. No way. Okay? The other thing is, is that when she had her eyes shut, when she applied the torque, it felt stiff. When she undid the torque, it felt more relaxed and less stiff. So. As she continued to withdraw and apply the torque, it actually enabled that to come out. So did she know whether it was an alpha loop, no. gamma loop, no. beta? No. So in answer to your question, yes or no? Do you need to know? No. So what is the answer? When you've got a loop... We just have to reduce it the way we feel okay, the, 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 we are comfortable and we are... You, you, you know that it was alpha loop or... No, no. Because the way you are reducing it, shut. sometimes you are doing the, applying the... Yeah, but plan. what makes you go that way? She's, all, she's demonstrated that she went a particular talk on the scope. Yeah. What made her commit to that particular talk with the scope? The comfortable the softness. softness. So do you need to know whether it's an alpha loop or not? No. Where is your starting point? 
If I tell you as a histopathologist, I take biopsies from your stomach and I tell you this is Barrett's, what as an histopathologist are you going to tell me? You have got Barrett's. So I'm, my starting point is I'm telling you something. Her starting point was, let me see which way is the least resistant. I'm not being told. So the alpha, gamma, whatever loop it is, N loop, it's the point of least resistance. The difference is on a alpha and gamma loop, you will reduce by applying a torque consistently as you withdraw. So it isn't doing the torque and pulling back. It's applying the torque slowly as you withdraw. Okay? As you apply the torque, with, if you're doing an end loop, you will actually apply the torque and then reapply the opposite torque to reduce. And then back again. Because an end loop does this and spirals up. So when you look at an end loop, this is the best way to look at any loop. As you can see, if I actually get this, this slides. This is a loop, is it not? Yeah? Scope is flapping around in the wind. Yeah? How can I actually get this scope to go that direction? So, I apply torque. I've applied torque. How can I get this scope to go this... Pressure? Did you say some distance? Uh, this hand should be a little far and I think then... Uh, no, 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 no. Angle. Straight. Position. Torque and withdraw the scope. Okay, so we come up. Does it matter which torque I'm going to apply? Most of the time clockwise. Most of the time clockwise? Depends. 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 So this way, mm, this way, mm -hmm. oh. Whichever way. On this particular demonstration, it doesn't matter whether it's clock or anti clock. So I'll just do anti clock. So as you can see, loop, 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 loop. Everything. I've tried everything you've said. Yeah? As I withdraw, I apply anti-clockwise torque. This is loosely gripped, remember? Scope steps forward. If I was to advance now, maintaining that torque, it'll re-loop. So I have to draw back to get the scope to actually be tensioned. Then look. This is genuine. Let go of the scope. It starts again. So what does that tell you to do with your loop? No. Come back. You apply your like torque, that. come back, maintain your torque. How do I know I'm maintaining the torque? We'll have a look, the scope is moving forward. Mm -mm. As, uh, maintain you know, your thumb. Same that, yeah. No, so my thumb started here. I knew I wanted to apply anti clockwise. I've started in an uncomfortable position. If that's comfortable, that wrist, then that must be something wrong. I bring the scope to a comfortable position, I then advance the scope with my thumb in a comfortable position and I advance it in that line. I let go of the scope, it does it. Different, isn't it? You're now thinking, what are you thinking? It's difficult, the pronounced is difficult procedure. I actually can't get the last point. This is the scope. I want, I'm going to just demonstrate with the, the scope tip. The scope tip is here. This is not what you do. This is only so that you can see what happens to the tip. Locked. So you can see what happens to the tip. I want to put 360 degrees of torque in this scope. How can I do it? The majority of people get the scope and they'll hold it. And then they'll do this. And that's 180 at best. Yes? And that's uncomfortable. Carpal tunnel country. We've got the scope. We've got my hand. I start with my hand uncomfortable. I now bring the scope around. And I end up 360. This is still a very tight here. So what have I shown you with this? Right at the beginning. Do you remember what I said? So if we actually now do this. Both hands work. Both hands work. So, when we have a look at the scope, yeah? So, you mean that when you are talking the, the, the shock of the scope? Hold the scope in your hand, okay. tight. Yeah. 
I've got the scope. I cannot apply this torque. Now just loosely grip the scope, loosely grip it to allow it to roll. You can feel it. I now start with my thumb at six, so it's here. I wouldn't scope by passing the scope this way. I want to apply the torque. So my thumb's at six, I bring my fingers down, I hold the scope, I rotate the scope, I bring the scope. 360, and I let it roll. So all the time if you are applying the torque, you should do the same in order. I now want to do anti-clockwise. I now start with my thumb at three. I now rotate the scope. So start uncomfortable and rotate, hold the scope and rotate it to a comfortable position. You'll find that that becomes difficult. And this is where this bit comes in, which I've shown you on the tape. So you get the scope, you want it to come anti-clockwise. I can't do it any further because I physically can't go. I've got the scope here. I then turn the buttons. The scope will stay where I want it to be. That's demonstrated by bringing the scope here and bringing the scope down here. And when I put the hands close together, watch what happens to the tip. As you put the hands close together, the tip becomes less. As I take the hands apart, the tip becomes more. So it is the correct position that you should hold the scope a little bit away the control. So, the hand, sir, sir, whichever the direction, the torque, whichever direction, and also, which direction I'm looking. So here's the scope. I want the scope to look that way, so I can do this. Yeah, the tip's moving. I can hold the scope, and I'm looking at you. I then hold the scope, and the tip's moving. I've not moved the scope, I've just moved me. I then turn me back, and the scope moves. So when I look at the screen, I like to stand square to the screen. But if I then want to make the scope look right, You'll probably see me do this. Does nothing to the scope, but does something to the tip. Yeah. The most important thing, which I'll get you to do in a few moments and I'll show you, is realizing that the scopes are an extension of your arm. Very, very important. So when you pick a scope up, this needs to be straight. Is there anything else that's very important? If I give you this scope, is there anything else that's important? How would you show me? So what is that the way you would normally hold the scope? Uh, yeah, the ring finger like this. Okay, this that's fine. Can help. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So put your hands out. Point your fingers. Point your fingers. Trust. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, if we actually bring this back, so she sits here. Mm -hmm. Now, that. Point your fingers. Now, hold the scope that way. Keep that in that line to your body. Now turn slowly and face that way. Now turn slowly and face, you're turning your wrist. Now turn back to me, your shoulders. Turn to me, face. Uh -uh, your hand is staying that way. See the tip? Now that becomes more when he keeps this further apart. So if you step back from the scope, comes less if he steps in, that relaxes. However, he'll lose the ability to talk steer if he holds the scope in a certain way. Hold the scope in the way that you're comfortable. Happy? Yeah. You guys, how would you normally hold the scope? Pick the scope up. Okay. You're probably all wondering, Happy? Okay. Yourself? And you'd hold the scope that way. Okay. Right. Why do you not hold it this way? I can hold a suction. I can hold my wheels. I can do this. Why do I not hold it this way? There is no exact height. She's smaller than me. The scope no, no, no. is down here. According to the body's teacher, I'm not talking about the taller, but what is the... Saad, he's up there. There's the scope, Saad. Yeah, sometimes we have seen in the video that 
some people are keeping it like this, they can fold down. Okay. So the most important thing when you're scoping is not the height of the scope, it's the height of the bed. The height of the bed should be here. Okay. Should be in line with that. The reason for that, and we would come to that, so you, ju you jump in, is because if the scope is too high or the bed is too low, you're doing this with the scope. If the bed is too high, you're doing this with the scope. If your hand is too forward, you're doing this with the scope. So the scope is having to do this to go round. If your hand is too far back, you're doing this with the scope. The hand needs surgeon or medic? I'm uh, medicine. Medicine. Yes, yeah. Okay. Medicine. Medicine. Surgeon. Surgeon, come here. We're waiting for one. You surgeon? No. 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 So I've only got one surgeon to pick on. I'll pick on you so so I know there you see you step further over because you knew that was coming. Which direct put this patient in a direction for doing a rigid sigmoidoscopy. Rigid sigmoidoscopy. Rigid sigmoidoscopy. Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, rigid sigmoidoscopy. Yeah. Rice, surgeon, rice. <laughs> Medics, would you agree, rigid sigmoidoscopy? Surgeons, would you agree? No? Right. All jokes aside. The reason for that is, is that what you want to do is when you're putting a scope in, you want to go to direction and keeping the scope in the direction as if you're doing a rigid sigmoidoscopy. What you'll find is because you'll have the scope on the bed, you'll do this and you'll be coming this way and you'll be pushing the scope towards the back of the patient and you'll be ending up doing this with the scope and a lot of the time it causes more pain because you're pushing back here. So what you need to do is bring the scope so it's here. In your answer to your question, this is why we go now to this, is people hold the scope here to allow the scope to come round in a plane. And then they'll step to the side so they can do it. Holding it here takes out that, and the scope will sit here and drop off the bed. So doing this. When you're passing a scope, if I want to apply anti-clockwise torque, I want that patient up there just a little bit. If I want to apply anti-clockwise torque, I want to ha not have this shape. Everybody says get the scope on the bed, like this. This is where this bit comes in, what I've been showing you. This bit then, look, this is the scope. It doesn't do anything with the hilt. Look, see, see the hilt. Now if I want to do cl clockwise torque, not anti-clockwise torque, I will have an effect of the scope. And that's because when I'm doing this and the scope is here, it's lifting this off the bed. Can you see this part of the scope? When I'm doing this, I'm forcing this in the bed. And that's causing you resistance. And you're going, I can't dock. It, there's resistance. No, there's not resistance. It's this forcing itself into a bed like a snowshoe. This is like an ice skate. So when we want to apply torque, this is what the shape we like to see outside the bed. This type of shape. That's what I look for. Others will like this. I don't. I like to see this. Now, if I can't get that, sh if you hold the scope here, I'm automatically forcing the scope down into the bed. If I hold the scope up, I can now do this. If I want to apply clockwise torque, I get my hand and I go under the scope to apply clockwise, it folds around. If I want to do anti-clockwise, hand over the scope, and I can do anti-clockwise. If I want to do clockwise, I don't have to do either. I just have to put my fingers here, and I have to bring the scope here. If I want to do anti-clockwise, I don't have to do either, I just have to turn the scope here. This hand only supports the torque that is driven by this part. This hand only supports. This hand only advances the scope. This hand, its grip 
can be actually reduced and the tension in the fingers can be reduced by remembering, if you remember, that when we put the scope in this position, if I bring the scope up and I put the scope down, the tip, the tip moves. But also my position of my body. So this supports, this is the driver. So, Mr. Surgeon, We've now got the patient in the rigid sigmoid position. Recap for me. Tell me which direction I'm going to pass the scope. Don't pull it. Yeah, go on. Yeah, so why is your hand going forward? If you were going to place a rigid Siggy, how would you actually put that scope in? So once the scope's in, and you're doing a rigid Siggy, where's your fingers in relation to the anus always going to be? On this plane or on this plane? On this plane. Here or here. Where is, when you're doing a rigid Siggy, your fingers going to be? Ideally. There! Okay, rigid sigmoidoscopy. We've got the tube. This now is in the patient. Nice. Now, where's my? Where am I going to have the scope in relay? If it's a rigid siggy, am I going to have it here? Am I going to have it here? Rigid siggy. Here, here. Now, straight. So, what, am, what do you think I'm trying to get you to realise? The direction. The direction of travel is always this. So when you, I'm, I'm going to exaggerate. This is not a patient, I'm going to exaggerate. So if you have your hand here, now you can see what happens. Now, oh, it's very difficult. And then Saad will be saying, Dr. Saad, I'm, I'm, oh, I can't get it in. Oh, oh, ah, ah, woo, yeah. Right? So there's a group of people in Leicester, we call them the Ooyas. That's genuine. So in Leicester, if you actually do a procedure and the patient doesn't say anything, fine. But if they go Ooya, you think, well, they actually go Ooh, you think, ah, oh, that's discomfort. If they go Ooya, that means whoa. If they go Ooya bugger, that means stop. <laughs> <laughs> so they call the Ooyas. Now, we now know what effect of the scope is. This is in the patient, is it not? Very difficult. So you're asking me what happens. I can rotate the scope. I can rotate the scope. I can, hands close together, it comes off. Guys who are learning and you're maintaining torque and you let go of the scope. So there's that. There's the torque. I maintain the torque, yeah? I've got the scope here. But as I put the hands close together, look at what happens to the torque. And this is what you have not been doing or doing it unconsciously. Okay? So if you understand this concept, you will not have bad finger and thumb because if you're doing this all the time without using your left hand and without maintaining the talk, you're actually making things different. So you need to understand this and if you don't, then please ask again. We will be reinforcing this throughout the next two days. Uh, but Sorry, Paul. No worries. So the most important thing is to realize, why, is it, why am I telling you that? Why am I telling you that? To make the procedure more easy and smooth? No. Nope. It does. But why am I telling, why would I be telling you that? How many have you done? For patients? No. How many have you done? Hands and the comfort. Hands and the comfort. But how many procedures have you done? 150, because you've done one of the few. So what you'll find you'll be doing, you'll put the scope, and then because you'll be thinking, right, 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 you'll be taking the torque off, or you'll be putting, because your hands are coming closer together. So f hold the scope, hold it tight, so you can feel what happens. I'm going to apply the torque, so therefore you can feel the torque, yes? Yeah. Feel. Now, as I put the hand close together, I'm doing nothing. Can you feel that? Yes. So as I get, oh, what's happening to the torque? Nothing. And as I stand up straight, yeah. 
And what am I doing with this hand? It's talking by itself, yeah. Yeah, it's talking by itself. So stand up straight, square to where you want to be. I want to rotate the scope, it rotates. Right. Now, I want to actually torque the scope. Now hold the scope tight. So I like doing this bit. Hold it tight, as tight as you can. Stop me turning the scope, is that okay? So you can feel that. Hold the scope. If I can turn this, then you're not holding it tight enough. You've not got a very strong grip, if I can turn this. Is that a strong grip? Can you hold that? So I've got a strong grip, yeah? Now watch this. If I hold the scope, you hold it tight, as tight as you can, right? I do this, nothing. I stand up straight and I do this. There's no way on earth you can stop it. Even I have to put a lot of tension in my fingers to talk. But if I actually come here, keep a straight scope. What did I say with the scope? It's an extension of your arm. Keep your arm straight, you can get it to do this. Very easy to demonstrate. Straight arm, I can do this. Bent arm. And so this is the same principle, as tight as you can. I want now to do anti-clockwise, nothing. I'm doing all this, this doesn't work. However, if I step out, and then I step in. You can't hold it. No one can hold it. Okay, so let's do, demonstrate. So just to recap, processor, this is the processor interprets light that comes back and reflect. A lot of these have got chips on, so this is measuring because of a chip and it measures the percentage of light. A, do you know how these work? No, so you're passing a, a scope and you don't know how the machinery works. Yeah. Doesn't interest you in the slightest? Yeah, they can add, but inside the machinery. Fiber optic, no, these are, these are not fiber optic anymore, are they? It's video scope, it's a lens. So we've not, uh, the, what you've got is black dots on the screen where the fibers broke, those are the old ones. And they go on OES 1, 100. Whereas on these, these are different, these are on AV. So slightly different. So what it does, the, what is the most important thing you do, what you have to tell this, he's not gonna tell you. What is the most important thing you do that you have to do with a scope before you actually do the procedure? Nope, before that. Wash. Wash, nope, oh, wash, disinfected. So this scope is wash, disinfected. Most important thing. Before colonoscopy. Most, no. For your equipment. DRE is for the procedure. What is the most important thing you do for your equipment before you put it into the patient? So you've done that. She's already told me what to do. No, we do that. She's already done that. She told me. She's already done that. Before you do that, he's done it. White, white balance. balance. What is the importance of white balance? You see the clearly the because of the. No. What does white balance do? Correct. How? Correct magnification. No. Nope. <coughs> magnification. No. Nope. Color. Magnific. Take magnification now. Colour, we're all saying colour, but what is the importance of white balance? What does white balance actually do? To look the mucosa inside. Nope. Pathology for Nope. Yeah, well, without the correct white balance, you can't tell what you're looking at. What white balance does, right? White balance. White balance actually tells it what is white. And what is So, what's this? This white colour inside. Have you ever seen it? Do you know what it does? We're all guilty. So we gently put it over the scope. We don't push this in because it's hard. We gently put it over the scope. We put, you cannot white balance with the light off. You have to have the light on. What it does then, it's white. It then tells it clearly what white is. So what it does then when the scope goes in, it flutters, doesn't it? It strobes. It flickers. Yeah. So what does it flicker? Just blinking. Yeah, what does it blink? 
Yeah. What does it blink? What does it do? Why does it blink? I've left you out for a long while. Why does it blink? Ooh, you didn't think you'd get this, did you? Why does it blink? Why does it blink? No, 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 it's proper white balance. Otherwise you'd be using the scope that was incompletely white balanced for every time you do it. Why does it blink? Nope, nope, nope. So, we put the lamp on. The lamp is on. We now put this on. We don't hit it into the bottom. We put it there. We then ask it to white balance. On this machine, we press it. And then you wait for it to... Yep. White balance complete, MBI white balance. So it's very important for MBI, if you use MBI. MBI is crap. So that's what I think of MBI. So now we know what white is. Now we can see what the colors are. A lot of the older scopes, this is actually on a different frequency, but a lot of the scopes flicker. They strobe through the three primary colors. Right, red, blue, green, and it then measures the percentage of the light that's reflected. And then it gives you a perception of colour. It doesn't give you real colour. That's not the real colour. That's not the real colour, but it gives you a perception of colour. You can then, when you look at this, peak, enhance, do you know what these do? But you use this equipment. Mm. So, you've got the right answer, but do you know what the... why? To identify the lesion. Mm, that's the purpose. Do you know you've got enhance, enhancement three? So you can see now, you can see more definition. You've got enhancement one, it's a little bit more blurred. So it's not magnification. Enhancement two is the optimal. So you can see what we've got. Yeah. So it helps define, it helps define the lines. Iris, do you know what this does? Auto or peak? So this just helps with definition. So this is definition. So that just superimposes the image to make sure it's okay. Iris, peak. Do you know what peak? If, Karachi you won't, but if you've ever driven in fog, you'll use fog lights. Fog lights work in a different way, they don't... If you look at a triangle, this is what peak is. The light is shot out and it goes to a point. Whereas when you go onto auto, it's like fog lights, where there is no peak and it cuts off and that's what gets spread. So that actually reduces the amount of light. Can you see now? And then when you have it on point, yeah. it becomes more defined. We like it on point. In doing this, anything you want me to recap before we start on this bit? So, uh, we didn't get this point at whether the shop should be lying on the bed or it should lie beside the bed because... I've already told you. Yeah, but we didn't get this point. So, it should be in the bed or... We, do, we didn't, in the poster, we didn't get it. Snowshoe, ice skate. What did I say about snowshoe, ice skate? What did I say about snowshoe, ice skate? Remember when I said here, the scope is into the bed. So if I want to apply anti-clockwise torque, it will force in. So if I want to actually apply anti-clockwise torque, I want to actually have my hand over the scope. Remember that bit? And then if I want to do clockwise, I want it here. So this is the position I want. Mm -hmm. so so that's the ideal position. Vertical. That's the ideal position. Anyway. That enables the scope to flick from side to side. You can do it yourself. <coughs> With this. I'm not doing it at all. Now, I'm not asking you to do so, but what have I just done to the scope? Sorry? What have I actually just done to the scope? So what are you guys going to ask for? You're going to ask for this? That's what I do with that. Okay. That's because if you actually use this scope, you're using this. This is just for support and advance. If I'm actually advancing and my fingers slip, that's actually a safety for the patient. 
because I can't apply too much pressure. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So, so you mean that you can apply the tug with your left hand and this hand just to feel the advancement? Mm. So when I have the scope here, yeah. if we actually look, so, and then we've got the scope, I just, you can see here, see the folds, I now want to do clockwise torque. Draw the scope back, I look, see the fold, I go under the fold, over the fold, down the fold, come back. I don't keep advancing. See there? And then you just rotate the scope. Tip comes up, tip comes down, anti-clockwise. Let the scope comes round. All the time is that no air because the, this actually is a mannequin. So when you look at the scope itself, it will actually go where you want it to go. I now want it to go completely anti-clockwise. I can step it off the bed. I can bring it round. Now what I can do is different to what you can do. Because don't forget, I've done a fair few more. Tip up, tip down, and I'm using the scope. Yeah. If you notice, how many times have I touched a little wheel? No. None. Yeah. So I'm using the scope like a finger to pick it way around. So uh, with this uh, left hand, how can we move it clockwise and anti-clockwise? Yeah. So you can see where it wants to go. Now, you can continue to increase your torque anti-clockwise. So once you come round to this point, you'll find that the sigmoid will actually kick forward as it comes round to this point and straighten if you draw back. Now, I haven't set the configuration up my friend here has, and he's, the configuration on this has a specific number of folds that have to be. Now, did you see what I did there when we go forward what did I do to that fold? Because I'm about to make you guys look at something differently. Right, all the hands on guys. I know it sounds a bit daft. So you'll need to take your glasses off. And I will do it as well. So, are you ready? So, take your glasses off. Right, hands on. You can do it if you wish. Put your finger on your nose. Yeah, no, you're looking, right, <laughs> genuinely, right? What I want you to do is tray, keeping your eyes looking forward, not off to the side, looking forward in the straight line. You have to look forward. I, even though I can't see, I'll see if your eyes look down or look up. So what you want to do is trace your finger up over your forehead till the finger disappears. Excellent, okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, finger on your nose. Now trace it down, looking ahead. Till it disappears. Okay? So, you've still got a little bit of your chin. You've still got a little bit of your forehead. You can put your glasses back on now. The lens is in the middle of the tip of the scope. When you come to come to a a fold and you see it in front of you just because it's out of sight it doesn't mean that you can go forward there is a doorway you just because you can't see the top of the door doesn't mean you're gonna not bang your head there is a, sh a ledge a shelf just because you can't see the ledge and you put your chin forward doesn't mean you're not gonna hit the ledge or the, the shelf so what you've got to do when you're going over a fold, lift your chin up. Go forward and then put your chin down. When you're going, see a fold in front of you and you're going under it, you want to put your chin down, go forward, lift your chin up. And that's where a lot of people fail. So doing something simple like this enables you to understand what you need to do because the lens is like your eyes. Just because it's out of sight doesn't mean that the fold isn't here. Keep the view central. Okay? So we come back, you can see here, the lumen is off to the left. When you actually look at the folds, you'll actually see where it's telling you. 
See where it becomes bulbous there? That actually tells you which direction to go. So I know which way to go. So the scope has gone forward. I'm now doing chin up to lift that fold out of the way that was above me. Did you notice? See the fold? So the fold is here. So the idea of this is to do these things. See it? So when you want to actually then go forward, you now can actually rotate the scope and it becomes a piece of cake. Yeah? Happy with that? How many times have I touched a little wheel? You keep looking. How many times have I touched a little wheel? Very little, none. So now I've gone anti-clockwise. I now bring the scope clockwise and then draw the scope back. And if we look at the scope now, we'll see that we're roughly going into the sigmoid colon. Let the scope, see the shape of the scope? You've asked what the shape of the scope is. We've got the scope here. The direction of travel, always in this direction. Direction of the scope, we've now gone round that difficult bend. See it? Mm -hmm. And now we're straight. And that's the bit you mentioned that you couldn't get round. Do you know, I'm going to be absolutely true. The hardest thing to do when you're doing colonoscopy is getting around this bit. Now, hepatic Fletcher guy. You're looping here. You're not looping here. You're looping here and the scope is going posterior. So that's going that way. So when you come up to the, to the Hispanic Fletcher, you actually want to bring the scope anteriorly. So you actually want to bring the scope, the apex of the scope forward and reduce. And then the scope goes forward, keeping it straight. If you look, this, it's easy when you can actually do it. I'm not bothered. This isn't a test of you getting around to here. This is a test of you getting around here. You've seen how to do it. Now I'm going to ask you guys who are hands on to do it. Any questions? Oh, and we were at 25 centimetres. Did a colonoscopy yesterday and we're at the cecum in 60 centimetres. But then when I reduced, it was 50 centimetres. So when you actually look and think, the, when do you think you have the most scope in someone's colon? When do you think, at what time is the most scope in somebody's colon? So you're saying it's when it's in the cecum, okay? When I have the less scope outside and there obviously there's a loop in. So, then so I when is the it. most likely time most scope is going to be in the Which cecum, in the, in the scope? Area? Doesn't matter. When, I, when am I most likely to have 100, 100 centimeters of scope in a patient? Sigmoid. With a big loop in the Sigmoid? Sigmoid? Wow! Patrick? Sigmoid. 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 Your, your sigmoids are getting under pressure. Please don't come near me. Explain it. Why? Because, uh, You're the you only can, one saying you can, it. You can loop in the sigmoid up to 6 to 70 centimeters, and if, if, if you are reaching for the splenic, it can. can okay. All, of the all right, so this statistically, it shows. That's why you scope forward to keep that reduced. So when you know all this, it confuses you. you know? So I, I just do it naturally. It just happens. And just the way it does. The least amount of scope is when you're here. You'll actually have this, when you reduce, you will have 65, 70 centimetres on average of scope in. You'll have the same amount when you're roughly around here. And that's because you bring this down. What causes discomfort and pain is pulling on the mesentery. And that's what causes that. So when you do anything in colonoscopy, you do it slowly and with purpose. So when I was passing the scope there, it was moving the scope around. So I'm not just pushing and then waggling. I'm advancing, lifting, moving it out of the way. It's like your finger, I'm making the way as I go forward. Any questions? It's right. You, you, 
even even our loop in the in this in the sigmoid. The, I find the best way to actually negotiate the sigmoid, and I've said it. So what directional talk? And you've worked with me. Not that I do. In whatever direction, it is easy to. to yeah. Move. So, but what did I deliver? That's the only time I deliberately go. There's two times when I'll deliberately do a particular torque direction. So, coming out here, see in the sigmoid, when I retro sigmoid, I'll go anti clockwise. Remember, I said, even though it's only a small distance, I, I will, just to go clockwise talk, I deliberately then brought the scope round anti-clockwise. And as I drew back, then the scope went straight. It's, it, that, that is what I do. Yeah. So, so when, you, when you look at the sigmoid, sigmoid comes here. So if I actually now go this direction, now the scope is down there, and then when I actually then bring the scope back upright, it brings this up and straightens and goes forward. If I go clockwise, I come round here clockwise, I push this down. And I continue then to stretch this here. So at, at this point you go anti-clockwise? At that point I go anti-clockwise. This point when I've got a straight scope, come back forward, I always come here, I will actually then come anti clock. I want this to come forward. I don't want it to hide underneath the spleen. Comes down, and then as I come here, then I straighten up, draw back, then the scope goes forward. I may change position. Change of position is something that we haven't talked about. Change in position is very, very important. Withdraw in particular. But what I want to show you is this. So, how come has he gone? Right, that's your cola. See the cola? Now, everybody look at the cola. We always have the patient in the left lateral. Can you all see the cola? Can you see the cola? Yep. Can you genuinely see the cola? What part of the cola is inflating? Right. What part is now inflated? What part hasn't inflated? So what part do we actually call... Can we see it? This is because this isn't clamping down. So you can see this is becoming and this is staying deflated. That's what happens in real life. We'll inflate the right colon before we inflate the left colon. So when we say enough air, we mean enough air. So when we look at this, the best way to negotiate the sigmoid may be to start in this position. Now look at the right. And look at the... How we used to, 30 years ago, the patient would be on the stomach and then we'd bring them up on all fours. Then we'd scope them this way. And the reason for that is that the sigmoid drops forward and it becomes very easy to negotiate. But what I'm saying to you is, just realise that having the patient in a certain position shifts the air. It also shifts the, the actual, how the bowel will actually sit if there's less tension in the bowel. But when we scope, we always scope with the patient in this position. We'll always inflate the right colon first. Okay? So if you want to get a glove on, you can be first. 
and I'd like you to pass the scope as far as you can. The gloves, are, gloves are up there. So what have I shown you? I've shown you you can pass the scope, you can put torque steering on, you don't, I put lots of gel on the scope, you can rotate the scope, you can advance the scope, things are safe. My friend's back now. You've done it, yeah, they ignore all that. Ow! So, <laughs> right, so we've done the DRE, but the most important thing is, is to let the patient know you're gonna put the two scope in. I only did that just to wind you up. But when we're doing real patients, anybody who does a PR, without asking the patient and telling the patient what they're going to do, you'll probably get me to doing this to you. Okay? So, which is to remind you. I don't, I'll, I will remind you verbally if you do it a second time, big style. But if you do, I'll just, I, I, will, I call it a, the secret PR, the secret attack. Oh, never knew we were going to do a secret. So don't, let them know what you're doing. Let them know when the tube's going in. Now, um, I will get you and hold your shoulders and stand up straight. So I will, guys, I, he'll tell you, I have no problem. I will actually come behind you and turn around. And if you're stooping, I will do this to you. That means stand up, okay? I may come to you and then do this, which is, I may say, to pull back with this. If I kick the back of your heel, I, there's reasons for it. The reason why I'll do this is rather than, if the patient's rousable, I don't want to embarrass the, you, and I don't want the patient to know that you're having some kind of learning episode sometime. I, I'll reduce, so it's just really giving you prompts, slow down. Good. Good. How does that feel? Stop, stop. What did I say about applying clockwise? Let go, let go, okay. let go, let go. Na na na. Now applied clockwise. How does that feel in comparison? How does that feel in comparison? Hand underneath. Bring this scope here. Now apply a clockwise torque. How does that feel in comparison? Yeah, it's, 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 it's convenient. Convenient? Less. <laughs> I, I'm moving this now. Yeah. Are you asking about the dog? I'm asking about you, yeah. <laughs> I would rather move. No. Okay. Stop. Right, so what I'm saying to you is, mm -hmm. we've got the scope. Okay. You're trying to do, and then trying to apply torque, this oh, comes oh, against oh, your hand. Yeah. This sits here, then stand up. What you're doing is that your scope come here, then draw back, then go forward, okay? So what all you're doing is talking the scope this way. There's no point, yeah, there is no point in doing that because you're not gonna be able to. Remember, and I'll pick you up on the point, it's not about what's convenient for you, it's what's right for the patient. Oh yeah, sometimes I can't say the words and he'll say them. Right, so where are you? What does your scope guide say? Okay, have a look. Okay, so take the scope out. We don't need to get to the cecum. All I want to do is just see that principle applied. So if you're finding it hard to talk, which torque are you actually applying? If it's clockwise, you want your hand under the scope. If it's anti-clockwise, you want your hand over the scope. 
Yeah, if it's anti-clockwise, over the scope. If it's clockwise, under the scope. Anti-clockwise over the scope, and clockwise under the scope. Yeah, that's what we were saying. So, happy? Yeah. Anything that you done differently? Now, there's the big thing before you... This thing which uh, you just uh, told me about holding it this way and this way, this was different. Because I was doing it like uh, subconsciously, but I did not know the way it works. Mm. That was good.